First it's not just the Freys and Brackens. It's the Blackwoods, both houses Vance too, the Butterwells for a hot minute, and especially whoever holds Harenhal, while we don't really know how powerful the likes of House Derry and Mouton were. The reason why the Tullus rule over the Riverlands though is fairly simple. While they aren't the most powerful house in the Riverlands, they do have a very strong castle that is geographically important. While the likes of the Malisters weren't able to hold off the Ironborn, and the Darys and Mutans couldn't keep the Stormlords out, we have no account of the Westerlands ever ruling the Riverlands, which shows they're at least somewhat effective. Additionally, House Tully does use marital habits and other means to try and boost alliances. We know Lady Celia was betrothed to Prince J. Harry's at one point, though it fell apart, and like the matches Hoster made, he himself married a Went, the Wents, especially at this point were the true power of the Riverlands. Hello everyone, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell, so you don't miss any new updates on your favorite TV series. Bryn Den was fostered with the Darys and won great renown during the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Holster managed to get offers for Bryn Den that included a red wine, or barring that a bracken or fray. Holster betrothed his eldest daughter to the heir to Winterfell. Holster betrothed his second daughter to the heir to Casterly Rock, and later married her to the Lord of the Eyrie. Basically, the Tullus tried to make themselves really good connections to remain powerful. Lastly is the fact that Aegon gave them the title Lord Paramount of the Trident because they were the first house in the Riverlands to rise up against the Ironborn during the conquest, and later the guy who was the head of the house during that time, Edmund Tully, would serve as Aegon's second hand. Because of Edmund's courage and loyalty, the Tullus were put in charge of the Riverlands. Feudal relationships in the medieval period which often serve as inspiration for the political dynamics in fantasy settings like the Riverlands, were not solely based on military strength. Factors such as historical alliances, marriage alliances, political maneuvering, and the granting of titles and lands by higher authorities all played a role in determining vassalage. Additionally, the Tullus might have had advantageous relationships with other powerful houses or the support of a higher authority, giving them the legitimacy and authority to rule over their vassals. The dynamics of power in feudal societies were complex and not solely dependent on military might. Aegon set it up that way so these weaker paramount houses, like the Tullus and Tyrells, would need the Iron Throne. With a dominant regional house in charge, there's more chance of an independence movement taking hold. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and drop comments. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.